hello. Okay, welcome to the Connor's Walking Home podcast, in where I walk home and talk to you about films, because I've just seen a film and I want to talk about it, and currently I'm not with anyone, so I'm going to talk to myself, because that's not weird at all. So the film I've just been to see was Deadpool 2. Now, I like Deadpool as much as, I don't know, I don't really, it's not the film I would choose to watch. Um, I would describe it as a Saturday night pizza film, like the film you put on when you're eating a pizza and then you get really full and then you look at the film and you're like, actually, this film's pretty shit. That's how I feel about Deadpool. It's not a film I would choose to watch, but it's a film I own and would put on if there's really literally nothing else to watch. But usually there is because better films exist. Now, okay, so that pretty much sets up where I am with Deadpool. Um, It's marketing for the first film is what made it um as good as it was and honestly that's fine um like a film is nothing without good marketing however a film also needs to then deliver what it's promising um and it didn't and that's a shame um okay so Deadpool 2 um the premise is um he's back um and he's got to save a kid from cable i guess uh because cable is in the future and this kid is like evil ricky bacon I don't know, it was, as a story, it was kind of a bit messy. Um, I got the gist of it. Um, it just didn't work, it just didn't work. Um, I don't know, I, I guess I'll have to refilm this bit because oh, one of the downsides about walking with Connor on to like, films is that I'm very unfit. <laughs> I'm walking uphill whilst walking. Bad idea, very bad idea, but it's fine, we're gonna, Carry on going through it. Fuck me. <laughs> anyway, so Ryan Reynolds um, basically comes back as Deadpool. The marketing for this film, um, it sort of it knows what it's doing at this stage, so it doesn't need to do the whole like, oh, you know, these characters and introduce them all. Um, that being said, it did sort of have to introduce a character that was in one of the X Men movies, but the entire time referencing back to the X-Men movies, which then makes it feel like it's not sure of where it stands. Because at one point it's trying to reference a film, but the next it's, you know, introducing the character from that very same franchise. Uh, it just didn't work. It just felt very, I don't know. Like there's a lot of, so basically when they made this film, there was a lot of issues from production um, in that they struggled a lot. Um, with Ryan Reynolds' ego because, you know, since the first film he's got some some form of now, you know, messiah complex and they keep referencing that in the film being like, oh, you think you're God and whatever, blah, blah, blah. But it just doesn't, it's not funny because what actually happened was he was a dick. Um, uh, I don't know. But, and... The, the jokes that work the most are the jokes that just are rehashed from the first film. Um, I, d- um, I don't know, it just felt pretty substanceless, really. Um, like, the jokes were there, but the entire time I was expecting the jokes to be more than there was. So, for instance, the soundtrack is pretty much songs that you've already heard from previous Marvel films. Like... Um, Thunderstruck by ACDC, which was used in Iron Man, and Pina Colada, which was used in Guardians of the Galaxy, right? So we know the songs, we know the films they're from, but at no point does it do a Guardians of the Galaxy reference, which is like, oh, all of these pop culture songs are from a, a, a really important part of my character, or, you know, something that's referential to Guardians of the Galaxy, which would have tied all of the songs together. But instead, what it felt like was lots of pop songs being shoved together to make you realise, oh wait, they're referencing this film. But it just felt like it needed something to tie it together. Otherwise, you're making references for the sake of making references, which is fine, but you'll only be as good as the thing you're trying to reference. You'll never be better than it. Um, I don't know. I love, I, I love parody films. I love spoof films. I love comedies. Usually I love comedies. American comedies are a bit iffy with me. But the comedy just didn't work. It just didn't work. I'm not sure what part of it didn't work for me. Um, clearly, 
the fucking exercise part didn't work for me because my god whew. um i don't know i just the strongest characters of the first film is deadpool but it's deadpool when he's working off of someone for the most part of this film he tries to recreate that comedy but it just feels okay the best way to describe the comedy of this film is it's like you're in you're in a group of friends right <laughs> which is already an unrealistic expectation for me but let's just go with it um you're in a group of friends and you say a really funny joke and like we're talking proper class a joke right no one laughs but fucking barry in the group everyone hates barry barry takes your joke repeats it and gets a laugh you then repeat your first joke because Barry fucking stole it and everyone just goes quiet, right? That is how this film feels. It feels like Ryan Reynolds has looked at the first film, saw what jokes worked and gone, right, time to recreate that because that's what people want. But I don't know, it just didn't work for me. It just didn't work. And now I am sure that consumer markets are going to lap it up, as they did with most Marvel films. But it just didn't, it didn't, didn't work. Um, now this is, what I'm about to say is a spoiler. The thing that worked the most for this film is when people are trying to get out of the film. And when people are trying to find a way to get the fuck out of being in it. <laughs> so there's a bit when they're in Charles Xavier's house and the original, not the original, the um, X-Men first class team are all in the house, but they're hiding from Wade in like a really short cameo. And that's funny. And that's funny because they fucking hate the guy. He's a dick. Why do they want to be in his film? You know, it's, it's just good comedy. Um, but then it just loses it to, oh, another superhero landing or... TJ Miller thinking he's funny when he's not. <laughs> Terry Crews was in this film as well for like, what, two lines? That's a fucking waste of Terry Crews, I swear. Like, yeah, Terry Crews and apparently Brad Pitt in the film. But did you utilise them? No. I mean, admittedly, you could argue that Brad Pitt was utilised, but it just not, it just felt very substanceless and it felt like it was being made for the money, not because Ryan Reynolds wanted it to. And that's what made the first film work. His people wanted it to work. And that's because it did. Like when the first thing got leaked, people went crazy for it. Then they then, you know, built up hype that way. But with this, I don't know, it just felt, it wasn't as bad as Kick-Ass 2, okay? I wanna make that very clear. This is not Kick-Ass 2 level bad at all. Kick-Ass 2 is okay. This is, uh, this is the Kingsman sequel level of eh, pretty substandard acceptable but you'd not really choose to watch it if you had the choice <laughs> so what have we learned while i've been walking and talking for the last uh, 10 minutes one go and see deadpool 2 make up your own fucking mind two i'm fucking lazy i need to walk more because my god i should not be breathing and panting this much and number three do not make another fucking sequel. We don't A, need one, or B, want one. But I'm sure they'll fucking find a way to make one. And I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. But I don't know what right I have to be disappointed because what it was going up against wasn't that great in the first place. And thank you ever so much for listening, if you chose to listen this whole entire way of me panting and talking like a fucking buffoon but thank you and 